so starting off uh, so basically uh, in in this session we would be talking about decarbonization what are the steps uh, that is needed and uh, acknowledging that it is uh, not a one time activity but it is a process in itself it's a journey that an entity needs to take uh, a, a, over a long period of time so basically uh, in this uh, presentation we would be talking about first of all the the genesis of the why decarbonization is needed what are the ways and means uh, uh, in which it gets incorporated and uh, then looking into the different steps which are involved in this process of decarbonization starting with the first and foremost of acknowledging and understanding where we are in terms of our emission footprint so the carbon footprint and then setting targets to slowly steadily move to uh, the 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 uh, decarbonized uh, set of activity or reducing all the emissions uh, and, and then uh, once the target setting is done uh, basically it needs to be followed with action as well in terms of emission reduction or emission removal activities and in doing these set of uh, activities and also needs uh, financing followed by communicating to the wider audience to the stakeholders about what is being done so um, starting off um, basically we uh, uh, have this decarbonization concept uh, more from uh, uh, a corporate perspective but uh, prior to that some bit of uh, regulatory push and a country wide or region wide uh, context setting uh, would also be helpful to understand this so uh, and in doing so basically uh, the four key things which go in here uh, uh, from an approach perspective uh, uh, from at a country level could be seen in terms of policies and regulations being set up towards reducing emissions uh, which uh, may also follow the use of some carbon pricing instruments like carbon tax or emission trading scheme or setting up some voluntary carbon markets and at the same time to drive all that bit of effort there would be need of public as well as private investments to take action towards reducing emissions and uh, in terms of the different carbon pricing instruments which support decarbonization is uh, one of the instruments is carbon tax uh, from a government perspective uh, which uh, uh, can lead to uh, the movement towards Reduce for reducing the tax burden, one would want to go towards lesser emitted means uh, to have the lesser outgo of tax. And uh, the uh, ETS scheme as well uh, helps to uh, bring competitiveness at the same time uh, reducing emissions. And last but not the least, the voluntary carbon market where there are no penalties but still uh, as a conscious choice entities to make uh, uh, activities to, do, to reduce their emissions either in-house or through uh, their supply chain or value chain partners or uh, as well as supporting other uh, entities in reducing emissions through purchase of carbon offsets and all. So uh, that being said, at a uh, at a country level, if we uh, zoom in a bit on the corporate itself as to what their climate journey would look like, uh, basically it starts off with uh, the the corporate understanding what their emissions are, uh, uh, followed by setting up of roadmaps or targets of uh, how uh, much they would want to reduce 
uh, by when so uh, uh, a quantification and a time bound uh, set of uh, activities uh, get defined in this uh, target setting and once the target setting is done then obviously it also calls for taking up action uh, towards reducing these emissions which could be either in the form of uh, energy efficiency or use of more renewable energy uh, and, and as well as uh, moving uh, subsequently uh, also towards decarbonizing the supply chain or the value chain uh, by different uh, set of actions and financing of these climate action is also an integral part of taking up these activities uh, with, with, with the periodic update to the shareholders and broader stakeholders as well in terms of the actions being taken up by the organization. So uh, first step first, um, anything that you can't measure, you can't improve. So with that bit of age, measuring the GHG emissions first of all is as an important and the first step in the decarbonization journey so where to start uh, and what is to be decarbonized so from a corporate perspective we see that basically uh, it talks about uh, understanding where all uh, the emissions uh, from the industry are but a, a prior question to that would come that why should we account for these GHG emissions, right? So uh, one, uh, so some of the reasons for that would be first of all acknowledging and understanding that uh, the climate changes for real, and we need to take up action for that, and every bit counts. So every individual, every uh, organization uh, needs to take up actions and collectively that's what will help the overall uh, global reduction in, 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 the, in the anthropogenic emissions. So uh, first is the understanding the impact of climate change and uh, taking actions towards reducing it. This is where uh, as a first step we need to know what our emissions are so that we can take appropriate actions towards addressing it. Second bit, uh, uh, not in the same order though, is from a risk management perspective, acknowledging that uh, these emissions will uh, lead into some sort of uh, impact to the industry, either uh, technically or financially in the form of say like uh, compliance, uh, I mean, from a carbon tax or an ETS kind of regulation uh, in, in near future. So to uh, as a risk management measure also accounting for the emissions uh, is important. And if there's already a compliance scheme uh, operating in the country, then the, the, the industry needs to uh, adhere to that. And uh, for, uh, um, also in terms of alignment with the expectations from the uh, shareholders and other stakeholders. So it could be a push uh, from the value chain perspective also, the upstream or the downstream players might be looking for uh, the, 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 the sort of uh, emission numbers. So uh, with that kind of uh, premise setting, uh, the, the, the need is first of all to understand where the emissions are from an industry. So basically the broader split is direct emissions and indirect emissions. And direct emissions are basically the, the set of emissions wherein the organization has a control uh, in terms of uh, uh, what material that they, they are using, what fuel they are consuming and all. And uh, uh, a subtle difference in the indirect emissions is basically the indirect emission, which is coming from purchased electricity, steam, or heat, or the energy part of it. So there is there is purchased energy. Then uh, these purchased energy, if it is not in if it is in the form of electricity, then it would have a, a embodied footprint to that. 
uh, with that electricity either coming from a coal based power plant or a gas based power plant or a grid mix in itself and the third bit and more complex part is the other indirect emissions which are basically from all the other set of activities uh, uh, which are categorized across different sectors in terms of uh, transport and distribution uh, uh, the, the, the the purchase goods and services uh, uh, the capital goods uh, uh, business related travels uh, employee commuting upstream lease assets uh, downstream transportation and distribution processing of new sold products so uh, an interesting thing in in here uh, uh, is uh, coming from the oil and gas industry right wherein the oil and gas industry in itself as a direct emission they would have a very small uh, 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 part of that uh, overall emissions but their predominant emissions are when those oil and gas uh, which they extract are being used by uh, by the industry by individuals is where their scope three emissions are in terms of use of their products right so when, when these uh, petrol diesel is being burnt then it will uh, release co2 uh, ch2 and other emissions right so uh, different companies have got a different uh, sort of profile of uh, these emissions generally um, the, the 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 industry kind of uh, starts with accounting for their scope one uh, and scope two emissions which is that's where they have more control they have data uh, and scope three is a more gradual uh, bit of work with the uh, uh, corresponding data and uh, information uh, is not generally available uh, so after the categorization of, of these emissions and understanding where the sources are basically how to account for these emissions is where there are different uh, accounting uh, standards which have come up uh, first and foremost starting from the uh, business side itself uh, from the uh, monetary side uh, CSD, they came up with the GHG protocol and subsequently uh the, the the iso standards also kind of built up further on on these uh GHG. so the ghg protocol standards there there are multiple of them starting first with uh things at an entity level with a corporate standard and then uh, uh the the value chain or the scope three standard because that's more complex as we saw in terms of the different categories that, that could be there in the scope three emissions. Then there are other protocols also for, for, for a product or for project and all. And similar uh, 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 view we can see uh, in, in the ISO uh, 14064 series as well. With ISO 14641 uh, uh, being more towards designing and developing organizational GHG inventories and ISO 140642 on a GHG project. So basically uh, the, the, the emission reduction projects. And ISO 140643 is more on the validation and verification of a GHG assertion of these projects, followed by the, uh, the underlying accreditation or recognition of these uh, uh, verifying bodies through ISO 14065. So that's just the, the ISO world uh, and uh, how they relate to each other. In terms of GHG accounting, it's important to understand few important terms because uh, having said simply, uh, uh, but at a corporate level where uh, an organization could have multiple uh, uh, establishments and different companies uh, and all. So it's important to understand what all is needed for the GHG accounting in terms of the important lumps. First of all, the, the organization itself, which is the entity that we are looking for, whether it's a company or a corporation, or it's just a farm, or, or, or only a part of it, 
uh, is public or private and, 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 and who is the concerned person who is responsible for providing this GHG data. So there, there has to be somebody who uh, is behind uh, the, uh, the, the, the compilation and presentation of the data and where this report is going to be used, uh, what is the level of assurance behind uh, the presentation of this number so there could be limited or reasonable assurance behind uh, the, the emission numbers that are coming up. What is the materiality involved in it? What all emissions are included? What are excluded? Uh, and all said and done, uh, there has to be a emissions report, which will clearly, transparently present what the emissions from an organization are, which sources have been considered, which have not been considered, and uh, so that a, a time series of uh, information also gets developed uh, uh, instead of just putting a number to the emissions itself. 